Cumbernauld, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Hi, welcome to a new episode of The Steel Show. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my hometown. There's a place that's so easy to reach by road, air and rail, over 500 companies have made it their home. What's it called? There's a place where so many people are settling, 1,000 new homes will be built by 1990. What's it called? There's a place where the future is so bright, over 40 new companies moved in there last year. What's it called? There's a place where people can enjoy golf, windsurfing, snooker, swimming, winter sports, squash, What's sailing, it rugby, called? Cumbernauld, a new generation. When asked where I live or where I'm from, I give the answer of Cumbernauld. And the automatic reaction of a certain generation will simply say, Oh, what's it called, Cumbernauld? And that's based on the advert you've just seen. It was created by the Towns Development Corporation in the 80s. At that point, the town was still in its infancy, as it was part of a new town initiative to cope with overcrowding in Glasgow. Now, I could show you all of the bad parts of coming old, and perhaps criticise a lot of it, but I actually love where I'm from. Sure, there's bad bits about the town. One thing I wanted to show you is all the vast amounts of great art that resides and sometimes makes its way out of this little town in the heart of Scotland. since 1960. This theatre came about due to local residents persuading the local council to lease some abandoned farm cottages. Volunteers from the community put a 55 seat studio theatre together within the cottage buildings. They made it such a success that they were able to expand the theatre in the early 70s to create a 250 seat thrust theatre. Perhaps the theatre itself is a full episode on its own. Maybe note that as a future episode for my channel. Community art continues to be a part of the new development areas within Cumbernauld and Andy Scott, who's famous for the Kelpies in Falkirk, also created Aria in Cumbernauld, as well as smaller commissioned pieces such as the Vitruvian Boy and Vitruvian Girl. Uh, if you check out his website, there's some fantastic pieces of art on there. One of the many people behind the establishment of Cumbernauld Theatre was a local artist named Brian Miller. Brian sadly passed away in 2011, but for me as a young boy growing up in the town, Brian was possibly responsible for my first introduction to art. I never met the man, I wish I did, but he created visual art all around our newly created town. Sadly most of it was never fully preserved, but you can see some of his examples here. Some were colourful backdrops to play areas or communal space for parking. Some were simple sculptures, such as the totem pole that still stands on Glenhove Road. Again, perhaps another full episode could be created about Brian's work on its own. And then the studio theatre that I mentioned earlier, the Cumberland Theatre, has now been renamed as the Brian Miller Studio Theatre in his honour, which I think is a lovely tribute. Another famous local artist uh, we have is uh, Gerard M. Burns. Gerard grew up and went to school in, in Cumberland. He's a graduate of Glasgow School of Art. He lives and works from his studio still in Cumbernauld here, with commissioned portraits in recent years of Billy Conley, Brian Cox, Alan Cumming, Ewan McGregor, Nicola Sturgeon, Judy Murray, to name but a few. 
a truly great artist of our time. Then there's music from Cumberland. Apart from my extensive musical career, obviously, which I've mentioned in my previous vlogs, um, we also produced Neil Primrose, who's the drummer from Travis, John Paul Lawler, who is known as John Fratelli from the Fratellis. We've got guitarist Jimmy McCulloch, who played with Paul McCartney in Wings. He spent his uh, some of his youth in Cumbernauld, growing, growing up in the early 70s. But we're still producing new bands and musicians all the time. Uh, we've got rehearsal rooms and re recording studios within Cumbernauld. Uh, and the local college actually produces a lot of sound engineers and, and uh, technicians within the music industry now as well. Uh, more recent artists to check out from Cumbernauld would be the Daikinis, uh, Dead Man Fall, uh, A New International, and Ryan Joseph Burns as well. Ryan Joseph Burns is the son of Jared Burns, who's the artist I mentioned earlier. Uh, Jared actually had a, a musical career as well um, in the early 80s, uh, the record deal. But uh, Ryan is a fantastic musician. I thoroughly recommend his, his debut album that's out now. We've also had our fair share of comedians too. Craig Ferguson who hosted CBS America's The Late Late Show from 2005 until 2015 uh, when James Gordon then took over and did his carpool karaoke stuff. Uh, but Craig grew up in Cumbernauld, started out in bands and doing stand-up in and around the town. He uh, returned to Cumbernauld actually in 2012 to record a special of his old hometown uh, for The Late Late Show. Visited his old secondary school, Cumbernauld High, and his old house in Torbrex Road. Uh, Craig's sister, Lynn Ferguson, she is also a, a comedian um, and she now writes and lives in California too. Then we've got Stu Who, uh, Phil Nichol. Scottish. I know I sound Canadian, but I'm actually, I was born in Scotland. I was born in a lovely little village called Cumbernauld. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? Oh, look at all the confused English people. Scott How did they Gibson. know that? I've been, I've been doing stand-up for just over two years now. For all massive names on the stand-up uh, scene, and they all come from Cumbernauld. Now, you might not know this, but Cumbernauld actually has its own movie studio. It's uh, it's quite a recent development. Uh, it was a, an old factory that was converted into to movies and uh, film studios. It recently had CGI work being shot there for Marvel's Avengers Infinity War, which is out in summer 2018, as well as Golden Globe nominated show Outlander. That's filmed there. That's where it all started really. Uh, Outlander was looking for premises to be able to shoot in. So most of the internal shots are all done within that studio. Uh, and they, they're based out of there, so a lot of filming takes place in Cumberland, as well as using castles and historic buildings all over Scotland. But the history of movies actually in Cumberland goes far as back as 1980, when Bill Forsyth chose Cumberland as his uh, backdrop for the BAFTA winning Gregory's Girl. Well, classic coming of age film that most people of coming old will tell you are either in or they know someone who's in it. Uh, there's a lot of young kids in the background and, and they're mostly grown men now who like to tell the story that they were in, they played in goal or something or they were they were certainly in background shots anyway. Uh, then there's Peter Mullen. He also used coming old as a backdrop for many scenes of his 1998 film uh, Orphans. Uh, and that's a fantastic film as well. Thoroughly recommend it. So that's a whirlwind tour of Common Old uh, and the art of Common Old. I'll try and put as many links to each of the artists I've mentioned in the description below this video. Comment, ask questions, maybe even suggest areas you want me to expand on. And I'll see you next time. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and feel free to share the video across your own social media pages.